Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week. It is midsummer, I guess, at this point. Officially, it is now July, and time seems to just be flying on by, especially with all of us being home right now and all the stuff that's still going on. So I hope everyone is doing good. That being said, uh, I do want to make a quick little... <laughs> I don't even know if it's an announcement or anything. I just want to have said that uh, I'm going to be recording two episodes today and then seeing how that goes further into the future of just stacking episodes. So I won't be able to commentate or add any whatever uh, voice after, um, to anything that might be said in between the episodes. So if it's a bit bizarre... <laughs> When you hear the next one, you're like, why is it, like, nothing's new because nothing actually happened. I'm recording them back to back. So I just wanted to give that heads up because I know it might be a little weird, um, especially for the YouTube audience, which is still, at this point, being backlogged uh, so that it can catch up to the podcast itself, which is, if you're listening to it now, you're getting it right away. But it just a quick heads up for anyone who might be listening because... I don't know. Uh, the podcast is still something that I'm trying to figure out, even though I've been doing this for about a year and a half. I think that's due to me not really putting... It's not so much that I don't put effort. Uh, it's that I'm not able to put as much time and resource that I would like to into it. Um, it's something that I have been trying to work on more, and I keep saying that, and I keep saying that, I know. Uh, but just certain things in life sort of take away from being able to put effort and like time and energy into the podcast that I would like to have there. I'm trying to correct that as much as I can, such as setting aside days where I can record mass episodes. And a lot of the times that we have gaps is mainly due to just things happening that keep the uh, sort of momentum staggered. Uh, I did mention in the last episode that I think I mentioned, I could be wrong, <laughs> I could have easily just passed it, uh, that I did start a new position a few weeks back, so that was why we had a, like a week or two skip into the, uh, from the Goatman into the Tessie episode, which was the last one that aired uh, last week, and because of that, I have a really, really weird schedule due to not currently owning a vehicle that I can use to get back and forth. So I take public transit, and public transit requires about three to four hours of my day um, spent doing that. And that being said, though, I do use that time to look up new topics and do some research here and there. However, typing on a train and on a bus really hurts my head because <laughs> motion sickness and all. But I am trying to get more effort into this and more energy and focus into the podcast because I love doing it. Like, bottom line, this is something that I enjoy. This is something that I started back in 2015 with the YouTube channel. And it was just purely created out of my interest in the paranormal and talking with people and friends who were also interested in similar topics. And then just literally in a passing conversation with one of my friends in high school uh during our senior year she just mentions like well why don't you actually do something like why don't you know we i think originally it started being like well let's make like a facebook group or something um but it eventually spurred into well, why don't you just make a youtube channel at that time and it that's really how realm of unknown started i decided during the beginning of the summer to just try it i had nothing to really use so i was using oh god what was i using i want to say i was either using imovie or um uh what's the other one for windows uh windows movie maker uh i think i had the first few episodes like that because i i didn't have extra money to just throw aside for a i didn't even have a good laptop honestly at that point to even make videos in general so it was that's how it started and um i definitely i had a lot of fun uh and i think that sort of enjoyment is what has allowed me to continue so far and allow me to deviate the brand into being the podcast format that you know now 
And I do want to say thank you for everyone who is listening and actually enjoying the content. I don't have the most, like, I I don't have the, lo- the strongest connection when it comes to really understanding how the viewer base is, I guess, consuming the, the podcast. So I can't fully, I guess, understand or appreciate how much you guys enjoy it or maybe not. I mean, who knows? Um, but if you do just know that I greatly appreciate that and I'm really happy that people can actually enjoy the, the strange topics and, uh, have similar interests in the bizarre and unknown that I do. And it's sort of humbling to realize that stuff that you grew up thinking was fascinating and just fun to learn about that generally people don't talk about and try to not to give any attention is something that a lot of people actually do enjoy and um so i appreciate that but enough with my rambling because uh i'm not very good at it as been noted from past episodes i do want to transition from that a bit more but into today's episode we have probably one of the stranger (laughs) paranormal creatures that are out there and i did talk about them over on the youtube channel several years back but they are something that is highly debated upon, uh, whether or not they are aliens or some strange creature or mutated human or just a plain out hoax. And today we shall be talking about the Fresno Nightcrawlers. So let us go in. Uh, the script formats that I am pushing a bit more now are going to be a bit, they're still structured, but they're not fully script written out as the past episodes i just kind of want to give a feel for this and just sort of have it flow so the fresno night stalkers what are they so the night stalkers gained a bit of notoriety during the year 2007 and this was due to a homeowner in fresno california hence the creature's namesake who had actually captured some sort of strange footage on his security camera that he set up because he was trying to figure out why his dogs were barking so much at night. So the man in question simply goes by the name Jose. He wants to remain anonymous, and I believe at this point he actually has passed away. But again, he set up the camera because he was worried that people may be trespassing on his property, or that maybe some animal like a raccoon or like a stray cat or something was just sort of lurking around his yard around the garage all that sort of stuff and he was met with something a bit stranger and this was the infamous footage that unfortunately due to this being an audio based uh, platform i am not able to show however if you are able to look up the fresno night stalkers or the night crawlers i should say you will find it pretty much right away. It is a very short video of what appears to be two short bipedal creatures that are rather pale in the video uh, that just simply move from one side to the other. And this freaked Jose out so much so that he actually brought the video to the police uh, due to just being so scared, confused, not sure what's going on type stuff. And uh, this is what sparked this whole phenomenon. And it really grew into a greater proportion due to the media getting hold of this story and of the footage itself. And this is what sort of sparked the fame or infamacy of these creatures into the general public and, in turn, internet culture. Now again, the family of Jose, who I again, I believe passed away, but don't quote me on that because I only saw it in a few sources. The family does remain anonymous throughout all of this. They just simply did it due to not really wanting to be associated with all the supernatural paranormal stuff that eventually came from all this stuff. But I do want to mention that the creatures themselves actually grew even further in uh, notoriety due to getting a spotlight from the Factor Faked show, which was a show that aired on uh, the Sci-Fi Channel back in, I believe, 2010, and it only ran for about two seasons. I I do remember watching it when it came out. I remember that was during my phase of... How old was I when that... 
I think I was 14 or 15 when that aired, and um, that was definitely during like the heightening resurgence of my interest in the bizarre and the paranormal. And uh, I was watching shows like, uh, I mean, obviously, like this, Factor Faked, um, but all those ghost shows, uh, Mysteries of the Museum, Destination Truth with Josh Gase, which I loved, and I rewatched that recently. But this is the sort of time period that you can kind of see this sparking from. At this point, too, I believe, again, this is not something that you should quote me on, but I did see in a few sources that they mentioned that the term Nightcrawler itself that was given to the name the Fresno Nightcrawlers possibly could have been coined from the show themselves and not actually been associated with the original stories. Uh, I think most of the time people associate it as some weird creature, some alien things, but from what I can sort of gleam, this may be the first accounts in which the term Nightcrawler actually came about, especially since these things don't crawl, they just walk. So a few people were sort of questioning why that was even a term that got brought up, but uh, again, this is something that may be the first time that it was associated as such. So what exactly are these creatures? What are these weird sort of walking twig-like things that are captured in a video? So one of the prevailing theories about the creatures is that, which we mentioned earlier, they could possibly be aliens. They move sort of like how people do, and that is very clear in the videos, but at the same time, they are so small, they move a little awkwardly, things are just sort of slightly off, and that is something that a lot of people do associate with alien encounters, that they can seem human, but are just ever so slightly not, and... This is further emphasized with their appearance. Again, they don't resemble anything that actually lives on Earth to any degree. They look like twig-like pants, essentially. And uh, people over on Reddit have also questioned this because it's Reddit. And also they have a very vast community of people who theorize on these sort of things. Uh, they do theorize that these could be alien creatures due to them just possibly being here to study us humans. However, they have noted out, over on Reddit that is, um, that the sightings were never actually accompanied with any UFO sightings at the time. So there's no real correlation between the two, but again, it's just something that people are speculating. Another one of the more interesting answers to what the Nightcrawlers might possibly be is from local Native American legend. According to some tribe members that live near the Fresno area, the Nightcrawlers are actually beings that are pretty much always there. They always existed on the earth, they always existed in the area, and uh, they were there before us, before humans even existed. And according to the myths, these native myths, the Nightcrawlers have very long legs, hence the sort of weird lankiness of the creatures in the videos and this is due to them moving through difficult or swamp uh, like terrain that they call home the legends continue on by saying that the creatures are just again they're very natural they want to help build or in this case rebuild the connection that humans have with nature and their surroundings this is questionable especially due to really that having no real correlation to the video itself because nothing happens in the video aside from them walking. But it is notable that there is some sort of story that predates the video itself, which some people see as giving some more credence to the video's possible authenticity. And that being said, there is actually, possibly, a second video that depicts the night uh, the Nightcrawlers. And this appeared in March of 2011, due to Yosemite National Park officials putting up cameras on trails in order to catch some footage of trespassers that had been damaging the property in recent days. The security cameras, however, again, they were shocked by what they actually captured. They captured the image of two pale, small, armless creatures simply walking through one of the paths. Again, once the media got a hold of this story, everyone was talking about the Fresno Nightcrawlers and the whole thing just sort of blew up because people 
there there's another video people are like oh my god there's another set there there's more evidence this could possibly be a thing this isn't just a one-off these are coming from national from a national park of all places so the story really took off at this point and this is sort of where a lot of the further speculation comes into play and the most notable thing to take away from this new video coming out the one from yosemite is the fact that in both cases they depicted uh very small creatures which people uh estimate to be no taller than like maybe four feet some be with uh one of them i believe thinking that it could be anywhere from like two to four feet and uh the night crawlers have no arms. They, the heads are very small in comparison to the overall body, which some people think have heads. Some people don't think have heads. Others think they're just these walking legs, while others assume them to be walking legs with a head, which is very gross in a lot of ways. People have also theorized that the night crawlers have a very, very small set of eyes that some people are noticing due to re-watching the video over and over and over again. And the last comparison between the two that sort of give it a description, again, is the pale color, which some people believe may just be possibly pure white. At the very least, it's something very pale that stands out during the nighttime on a video camera. Now, moving on with some more, I guess, like miscellaneous information when it comes to the night crawlers. We have, uh, I should say, since the original video, the night crawlers have been rather quiet. Again, aside from the Yosemite video that came out a few years after the fact, it's still a five-year gap at that point. Well, a four years, a few months type gap. Since that point, though, no other security cameras, no footage, nothing around that area captured any sort of evidence or video or image footage of these creatures. So much so that people haven't even had physical encounters with these creatures. They, like, we only have these two videos as any sort of solid evidence. Um, clearly, they don't seem to be doing anything. A lot of people just find it very strange that they also find them very harmless in a, in a sense because it's just two things walking across a screen and there's no reports or any accounts of people being harmed, people being abducted or like property damage. Nothing happened after these videos occurred that may be connected to these things that are in the video. But with these two videos, the Yosemite one and the Fresno one, it seems that the creatures actually do travel in a sort of pair system with people pointing out that the in both videos i should say that uh there is two creatures in the footage and they also theorize that due to this pair system that one of the creatures might be always bigger than the other again there's only two videos to actually pull from so it's like all theory and speculation but in both videos, there is one that is slightly bigger than the other one. This might purely be due to perspective or just how the camera was positioned. But within it, it looks as though there is a larger one and a smaller one. And they're both traveling essentially in unison across the screen from one direction to the other. Even more odd, though, is that in both videos, the creatures seem to be walking in a rather human-like way. Uh, it's very hard to describe unless you've actually watched it yourself, but essentially think of a pair of jeans, and this will get pulled into uh, in just a moment, but think of a pair of jeans as someone like walking in them, but just take away the upper half. Just like the visual of legs walking is sort of like how these are, but very awkward in a lot of ways it's more i guess associated I, I guess closely uh resembling if you had like really 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 tight jeans on and you like kind of have to like waddle walk in a way like it's almost like that but people associate this because it almost looks as though the legs the very base of the leg flaps a little bit so people actually theorize that this could be some form of fabric, that these actually are some like 
possessed pants, that these are actually people in costume, that these might actually just be... It goes all over the place. Like, people think a lot of things when it comes to this stuff, and we will consider this, because we talked about some of the more out there belief with the aliens, the native legends, all that sort of stuff, but there are just as many theories when it comes to the hoax angle. And a lot of them have to do with these, again, possibly being a type of pant that someone is simply using to hoax the video. When it comes to the hoax angle as a whole, the creatures, again, are rather strange and awkward in their movements. And this has led some people to believe them to be a sort of rigged puppet setup rather than a type of living creature. Now, once more, I'm going to mention uh, the sci-fi show that we brought up earlier being Factor Faked, which did cover the Fresno Nightcrawlers, I believe, in like a really, really early episode. Uh, it, It definitely was in season one. But if you aren't aware of how that show sort of is formatted, the the way they do it is they find some sort of viral video. Again, this is during like the peak of when YouTube and Reddit and all this crazy like social media stuff was like really, really kicking off. Like it's only a few years after YouTube and Twitter even came out. But the way this show was formatted was it was a group of and I'm using air quotes here, experts, because they come from all over the place, but at the same time, like, in that sense, they're, like, video experts, uh, special effects people, uh, like, historical researchers, advertising market, people who are in the field that could possibly fake it, and then using that knowledge to be like, well, is it faked or is it not? I, I gave air quotes because... Again, this is on the sci-fi channel, and again, this is during the height of, like, just get attention, just get those views, get those clicks, get as much, like, coverage, anything you can do for views and uh, ratings, and essentially, and this is, like, reality-based. It's not, take it with a grain of salt, is what I'm saying. Um, But the way they would do it is they would find a video or two, and they would break off into a team of... uh, I believe there were seven or eight of them, and they would just split in half and each cover one uh, video. And, and then at the very end of the episode, they would come back and they would present their evidence or present whatever they determined to the other team and vice versa. So in this case, the team that went to investigate the Fresno Night uh, Crawlers, they first went, and the way they do it is they first go there, they do an investigation, like because, this, again, this is the height of paranormal investigation shows they do an investigation they set up all their equipment they do all this stuff they try to find new evidence of the night crawlers themselves they don't come up with anything so then the following day or in some cases right off the bat they transition the episode into being less of an investigation and more of an analysis and in this segment i liked i think is the reason why i liked it honestly um They take the time to break down the video and try to determine if there is a way to hoax it. And in this particular episode, they actually tried a few different methods. So their primary thought was that they they, they leaned into the puppet idea. So their primary thought was the fact that, hey, possibly these are just a pair of pants or some form of fabric that is being wired across the video. So they tried it a few different ways. One, I believe they had like fishing wire that they like strung upwards and had someone move across. It didn't look good. They had another one where, which personally, this is one that I remember thinking that's actually pretty close. They set it up so that they were actually attached to a cloth wire and the wire was moved in such a way that the pants sort of were able to walk across the ground. Obviously, there could be further things that just tweak it. Uh, I thought it was close, very close to what it could be, and they just, like, quickly manufactured this. It's not like they, if you were actually trying to hoax it, you would probably put more time and effort into it, you think? But they also tested out possibly having, like, a kid or someone who's, like, shorter or stout that's, uh dressed up in a sort of costume similar to the pants and then walking however though the show determined that 
none of these were successes, that they were all failures in an attempt to prove it. And they actually determined that the video was authentic and that it could not be reproduced in any way. That their exact words were like, this is impossible. It's almost impossible to do. And I think that's a bit far-fetched. I think it's wildly possible that, especially, again, during the age in which people are just trying so many different things to get famous on the internet or try to get something, some sort of notoriety, that it is possible that someone just maybe just did this for fun. Again, the idea that the family stayed anonymous does give some credence to the video. But at the same time, it could easily just be that the family just wanted to try this. They just wanted to see if it was possible. They don't need the notoriety. They just wanted to see it. But one of the major things that I think is why it's still very possible that this is hoax. Again, the clothing uh, clothing line was very similar to how the video was. And I think it's very, very close that if they tweaked it further and refined it and actually like spent the time to plan out a hoax i think it could have been possible but another key thing that isn't always brought up is the fact that we don't have the raw video like we don't have the original original video file of what was captured the original video that everyone knows and the one that i'm telling you to go look up that actually shows the creatures from fresno is a video of a video the Jose man, the guy who we don't know his full name, recorded the security footage that he captured and brought it as evidence to the police. So if you've ever recorded the television with your phone or a, like a video camera or something, you know that recording a screen with a different screen compresses things even further. It applies a new level of distortion. It's just all these new things that they sort of dilute the original footage and to not have the raw file is a huge huge hindrance when it comes to really determining what whether or not something happened and having that extra layer of sort of static between real and not definitely could possibly be a reason why it looks more real recording a screen from a screen and then compressing it and having it sent like if there was a wire, we might not even be able to tell at this point. So who knows? For me personally, I think it's very much still up in the air. And for for them to say that it is impossible, uh, I very much think was just a way to stir up rating and uh, conversations. Uh, but that's just me. And I, again, I was young at the time, but I definitely did. I was confused. I was like, why? This is possible. This doesn't seem like it's impossible in any way. But another thing that I want to mention when it comes to the whole hoax possibility, uh, it's not really a hoax, but the idea that this is sort of turned into something that's more mainstream in a way, that's this sort of like become its own cultural urban legend, is the fact that the Native American angle that we mentioned earlier, uh, there are a numerous amount of photos that have popped up that allege to depict these creatures. A lot of people think or claim that they are native in origin, that they are some strange structures that you find across the United States. And when I say across the United States, they are literally everywhere. They range from wherever. But the problem is, we don't know where they're located. (laughs) These are all claims that they are located everywhere. Uh, The theories are that they could be in New Jersey. Others have them being near Fresno, California. Others have them all over the place. Like, we, we don't know. And we don't know who made them. We don't know really who. People just sort of post them or capture them. But they don't claim to have made this, the statues. They're wooden. Some are, like, stone, I think, in some cases. Mainly wood. Uh, but there are these, like, carvings that are, like five to eight feet tall like there are these weird looking things that have long legs and a very very short head attached to it no arms so it's very much what was captured but exaggerated and the fact that we don't know we don't know where they're located we don't know where they originally were made from who made them what their connection is i think it's very rash to immediately jump towards them having native origin 
Like, because we don't know. We we really cannot determine if they are native in origin or are simply creations of the story and lore and subsequent video that came out. Like, we, we don't know which came first. And, and this f- sort of further extends into other sort of alleged sightings of the Nightcrawlers. I mentioned earlier that no one has had a physical uh, encounter. And this is very much true. Because despite there being internet claims all over the place saying that people like have seen it, that they, they saw it in their car, all these things none of these stories can be confirmed like none of them can be confirmed in any way there's no solid evidence for it there's no like credible report on it there's no videos there's no no photos it's just people talking about seeing something in like a forum or a video or someplace where that topic is already being discussed so it's very hard to actually lump these new sightings that are spread all over the place uh, across years and years of time as something that is credible and and that is something that you unfortunately see with a lot of paranormal and supernatural stories i guess just internet stories and, and mysteries in general but it's just something that you sort of kind of expect as of now uh to be a thing when it comes to this sort of story and unfortunately the night crawlers are they're not exempt from that but that's actually a lot of what that that's pretty much it that's pretty much it for the fresno night crawlers they are a very short in literal sense and figurative sense story and creature but they are rather interesting and i thought that they were just a bizarre spooky creature to talk about and it sort of leans into the more urban legend and internet age stories that I think really got me back into the paranormal and got me back into looking into mysteries and getting me interested in these topics uh, that have allowed me to actually stay interested for years at this point. But yeah, uh, if you're interested, I definitely would love to look into more internet-based stuff. Uh, There's definitely a lot of really interesting topics and stories that have come out since the internet has been a thing. Uh, And there's also internet-themed mysteries and stories like everything's on the internet type thing like it started on the internet it's associated to the internet and it stays there those would be fun to do too i'm not sure whether or not i'm able to fully do them justice but who knows it's fun to look into and i hope you guys do enjoy the sort of information slash commentary that i could provide when it comes to these topics and stories and if you have any suggestions or like i don't know requests in any way please feel free to reach out uh you can do so at realm of unknown at gmail.com i take pretty much every request possible i have a few that are on my list that i have pulled from people reaching out about that you can also do so on twitter and instagram at realm of unknown i'm primarily on twitter i'm considering dropping the instagram but I don't know. Uh, I might just maybe convert it. Who knows? I might just use it for investigative purposes uh, where I post evidence, I guess. I don't know. But also, if you do want to check out, we do have a Patreon. Uh, I am clarifying in these recent episodes that due to all this economic uprest and uh, all the stuff that's happening in recent months, that if you are unable to support, please do not do so then. I'm not, you know, trying to force it on anyone, and I understand the struggle that a lot of people are going through. I personally have had to shift jobs because my old position, uh, I was for low due to it being in a restaurant, and restaurants are not open, uh, especially in Philadelphia. <laughs> and um, so I only recently was able to get back into a, a working position and have like a consistent workload. But if you do still want to check out the Patreon, I do try to keep it as balanced as possible. I know a lot of people might think this is odd, but when it comes to a Patreon, I see it more so as a community tool and not so much a purely restricted area. I have, and this is this is not knocking on anyone who does that. This is their choice. This is my choice to do this too. But I will see Patreons that I do 
not that like these aren't people that I want to go support. These are just ones that I stumble across that are completely locked away. Every single post is related to Patreon uh, subscribers. Everything is there that you would want to see or even maybe want to learn about to entice you to see it uh, and subscribe that everything is just behind a paywall. Everything is there and you're just dumping money into it. I understand. I understand that that is the process of a Patreon, but the Patreon that I have right now, especially since we're so small, I do not see that as something that should be necessary or should be a thing. Um, if you do subscribe to the Patreon, there is only a max of a $5 tier. It is five, three, and $1. And within those tiers, you get behind the scenes content photos and recordings from investigations that I might go on, uh, extra news articles that I find interesting and post, bonus episodes, being able to participate in monthly polls that become episodes here on the actual podcast, so you get to determine a episode topic for each month, and you, essentially the way I see it, again, I just see it as a community tool. The rest of the content though, uh, again, certain articles, uh, sort of teasers or snippets from things that might be coming down the pipeline, simple like notifications on how things are going, uh, how if a video is delayed or not a video, a recording is delayed, that sort of stuff. I keep that public. I allow people to go there and actually participate and view it and read the posts and be a part of it if they want to, uh, because I think that that it's just what it is. People use Discord for that. People use Facebook for that. I use Patreon and Twitter for the most part. So that's just me. And uh, I just wanted to let that be a quick reminder that it is a possibility. And if you have topics and stuff you want to talk about, head over there and comment on stuff that's being said. But until then, I am going to wrap this up because this video actually... God, this video, this audio recording... Went a bit longer than I actually expected it to be because I guess I'm talking more than uh, actually recording from a script. But again, I hope you guys did enjoy. And uh, if you would like, leaving a review would be really, really appreciated, uh, especially since I love hearing your guys' feedback and how I can improve overall. But until then, I hope you guys have an amazing time and have an amazing holiday weekend if you're hearing this on the 4th of July. Uh, if you're in America, I know things are kind of rough right now and things need to get better in a lot of ways, but I also understand that people need to celebrate this in the way that makes them comfortable. So by all means do that, but at the same time, understand that we need to do a little bit better. Um, but I still hope you have a great weekend. So I shall see you guys all in next week's episode. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great time again. Remember to stay spooky.